and friend Rajesh Kapakumar, who, by the way, is the director of the IC, the International Center for Theoretical Sciences in Bangalore. And sometime in your career, you have a chance to visit. I strongly encourage it. It's a great place, and uh, Rajesh will welcome you. He's going to give a series of lectures on deriving gates during duality, ADS, DFT, and other dualities of the same type. Uh, in fact, today starting with the matrix problem. Uh, uh, thanks very much, David. And I add to the New Year greetings. <coughs> it's, um, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, uh, I mean, I've been to Jerusalem many times, but it's especially nice to be here at the winter school since it was one of the first winter schools I attended as a graduate student in, and it was almost exactly 26 years ago in the, uh, in the <coughs> new year of 96, 97, and in the new year of 97 I spent here. Uh, so it's very nice to be here in the new year of 2023 uh, and, uh, and to be talking. Uh, so thanks, uh, David. Uh, David has been uh, a great mentor and uh, also, of course, uh, running uh, schools like this, but also ICTS that he mentioned. He has been uh, chairing our advisory board and been instrumental in making it a world-class center, so, and we have a lot of string activities, and I will hope to see many of you uh, in Bangalore at some point. Um, we also have two students from ICTS here in the audience, so uh, it's, uh, it's very nice that uh, uh, Tunir and Pradashi are here. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so the title of my talk uh, is uh, gate string uh, duality, which is in a sense a, s a slightly wider term than the ADS-CFT performance. I intentionally uh, kept it so. Um, I'll start with some general remarks, just to get warmed up, if you wish, with some broader philosophical uh, uh, remarks. I'll sort of call them how and why questions. Uh, so, so these are uh, to motivate uh, what uh, will follow. Uh, <coughs> but, um, uh, uh, but the main content of the talk will be to illustrate a certain approach through certain concrete examples. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the first one will be just a one matrix model, one permission matrix model uh, 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 with sort of Gaussian plus interactions, so it can be a general potential. Uh, and uh, a candidate dual, which, uh, or rather, there will be a couple of duals, but for the purposes here, I'll just restrict to mention one, which is a cigar geometry, uh, uh, and uh, 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 which I'll describe more later. This will be a topological A model. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll try to, uh, uh, in these concrete examples, what I'll try to do is to uh, uh, try to show how to make these dualities manifest or in some sense tautologize them and and one way uh, and I'll be more precise later but uh, but what we will sort of see is how you can match the spectrum of uh, the the Hilbert space of single particle perturbative states uh, for instance and correlators again of uh, correlators of uh, single particle uh, uh, states. Uh, uh, so we'll see how uh, we will be able to make the equality. Uh, we'll first verify the equality and then try to sort of uncover why they are equal. Uh, and that's sort of the goal of most of these lectures is to sort of understand why these different theories are equal. And uh, so we then go up in complexity by looking at uh, 
uh, string theory on ADS3 times S3 and some uh, certain tension less limit. Uh, and uh, sorry, I should have put it the other way around since I'm writing the gauge theories on this. So the free symmetric product of the fold CFT. dual to ADS3 times S3 times D4 type 2 string theory with in a certain tensionless limit which I will describe later. Uh, and here again we'll I'll try to um, uh, describe the spectrum and the correlators and their matching. And finally uh, the case which is perhaps of greatest interest uh, and equal to four superangles, but we'll start again with the free. And I say free, I always in some sense have perturbative uh, in mind, uh, because once you match correlators, in so and that tells you that you can go away from the uh, uh, a free point in a perturbation expansion uh, and here again uh, string theory in a similar tensionless limit in this case we have a, a partial picture only we'll, we'll give a certain proposal for the world sheet which will reproduce the spectrum so in this case there's a prescription which sort of uh, matches the spectrum, but it, it still hasn't been derived from a first principles sort of quantization of the string theory, and that is a, an important open question, and uh, uh, which will, will hopefully uh, So I'm hoping that we'll cover these two in the lecture one and two, and this in lecture three and four. But let's see. Yeah. By the way, it, there's, this is also a chain of increasing complexity. Um, but uh, if I have time at the end, I'll try to say that there's some kind of a inclusion here as well uh, and that that there's there is a uh, this is a little more speculative it hasn't been fleshed out but uh, I think this chain there is a way to sort of uh, uh, embed things successively uh, <laughs> in uh, each of these so it's not a completely arbitrary set of examples uh, to focus on okay so uh, so some general remarks. Uh, um, I think it was David who used to say when I, I suddenly remember some, uh, when I was a graduate student, to say that as the science matures, you s instead of the questions shift from the what kind of questions or where, when, whatever, uh, to more the how and the why questions. Uh, so ADS-CFT has been Again, <coughs> we are marking 25 years. I think it was uh, almost exactly 25 years in a month, maybe, uh, since the Maldesenat paper. Uh, and uh, uh, so it's been an amazing uh, uh, sort of a insight, and it has it's this gift that keeps giving uh, this last quarter of a century. But uh, I feel it's worthwhile, uh, as we've learned so much about it, to sort of try to proceed to more why questions uh, and in or how questions and uh, and what I have in mind is a question like why is there gauge why is there such a gauge string correspondence uh, so uh, uh, so so why does such a correspondent correspondence even exist so uh, So 
this is uh, uh, is a sort of a way to also ask the question you might some of you might be asking about what uh, when I uh, the title of my lectures uh, you might be wondering why derive gate string duality and you might think in some sense hasn't it been done already in Maldasena's paper, and I'll try to uh, I'll just come to that shortly. Uh, and um, uh, so, uh, so uh, the uh, uh, so I uh, so so as I said, yeah. So this is in some sense, I think, a physics question. But uh, if you wish. This is maybe more a psychological uh, uh, or a sociological question. Why do you want to derive the string duality? But I'll, I'll, I'll try to give you some reasons why I think it's important. And uh, if you accept that, you the next question would be, how do you try to derive gate string duality? So, uh, so I'll try to uh, to offer some thoughts uh, on these, but. Let me try to say why I think uh, it's important to try to derive gate string duality. And when I say derive, I, uh, I, I deliberately didn't use the word prove uh, in some mathematical sense. Uh, uh, derive, I mean in a more uh, physical sense, in the physicist sense of trying to understand why uh, there is an equality, to try to make the equality manifest, as I was trying to say earlier to sort of tautologize it, uh, because I think that's, uh, even that level of understanding is currently absent. Um, so, so, so why derive? Well, uh, one is to decode the, uh, the holographic nature of gravity. So in some sense, for us right now, this is an uh, experimental fact uh, through the ADS-CFT examples, but we still don't understand how does space-time emerge from, uh, from a large n gauge theory. We don't understand it in uh, fine detail, microscopic detail. We don't understand how general it is, uh, whether it happens from all gauge theories. Uh, when does it happen? We don't understand whether how to go beyond asymptotically ADS geom spacetime. So, so these are various things which I think uh, a fine-grained derivation can help to address. A, a related question, a re another answer which is sort of related to this, the first one, but slightly different, uh, is uh, let me draw a picture for that. Uh, if you wish, the the basic phase space of parameters uh, of the gate string correspondence is one in which along the vertical axis is say one over n or the g string or Newton's constant uh, along the vertical axis, and on the horizontal axis is the Toft coupling, which is some radius of the ADS in some string units, some power. Uh, and this is lambda equals to zero, lambda equals to infinity, uh, and this is the uh, 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 one over n parameter, uh, correspondingly the bulk uh, uh, parameter. So if you wish, this is the corner where we've been, where a lot of our understanding has been, namely this is classical Einstein gravity, or supergravity. Uh, uh, and of course, you, you sort of go in a perturbative expansion a little around uh, this point uh, in maybe a far series in 1 over square root lambda, uh, 1 over n, the first couple of uh, terms. And so, so we largely explored this, but this is the sort of quantum regime, the fully quantum regime in the bulk. 
<laughs> this regime here where we still, where, where we keep the classical, where, where we keep 1 over n very large, is still a very large regime, which you can think of as the stringy regime. It's classical string theory on this geometry. And uh, even this regime is uh, uh, very, uh, is still a bit of a mystery. Uh, uh, so, so one another potential answer to the question why there are uh, uh, gate string duality is to understand stringy geometry and and tease it apart from the uh, quantum regime from quantum geometry. I mean, we, uh, 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 I mean, uh, when we go beyond Einstein regime, there we, uh, there's quantum effects and there's stringy effects, and we don't. Uh, and it's I think it's very useful to sort of uh, 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 to separate out these two uh, sets of uh, effects. So this is still <coughs> classical. Stringy geometry on ADS, uh, for instance. Uh, so for that, you would have to be somewhere in this regime, uh, uh, away from quite far away from lambda equals to infinity. So these are, if you wish, bulk answers to these questions. So, so these two. So this is two sets of answers, and these are from the bulk point of view, uh, and. In some ways, I think answering them will go towards some way towards answering the question, what is string theory, at least in a certain limited context. Um, but there are reasons also from the boundary why I think it's useful to, uh, uh, to try to derive gate string uh, duality. So one is, does uh, gate string duality I just approximated GSD. Uh, hold for non SUSY large N gauge theories. We don't know too many examples. We don't. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I think if people had to guess, they would probably say yes, but but it's still uh, not very clear. So more generally, map out the space <coughs> of such dualities. Uh, and a kind of a special example of this is, can one derive the string dual for QCD, or large N Yang Mills? Ordinary bosonic Yang Mills theory on QCD. Uh, so, so these are uh, boundary kind of uh, motivations, and um, and I think. Uh, our state of understanding needs to be more refined that, than what we currently have if we have to uh, to make progress in understanding these questions. Uh, so, if you uh, uh, so, in that sense, as I said, uh, uh, the idea of uh, derivation is to sort of try to decipher a mystery rather than sort of rigorously prove things. Uh, so, if you accept this these why questions, uh, you can ask, OK, so uh, how uh, to derive gauge string duality? Uh, it's not that people haven't thought about this. Uh, 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 there's the, uh, and so I, I list out five approaches that people have 
broadly taken. There might be more, and you should please add to the discussion uh, uh, if uh, uh, I might have overlooked some. But um, and I'll mention each of them and some insights that we've gotten from each of them, as well as the limitations. Uh, and I think we need to synthesize all these partial insights from each of these points of view, though I will focus in the end on just one of them, one approach. Uh, but I think uh, I'm laying out some of these gen various general approaches as a, because I think each of them gives a valuable sort of a piece of the puzzle. So the first is D-brains and near-horizon <laughs> geometry. So this, of course, is the way one arrived at the ADS safety uh, and correspondence. It's also the origin of most known dualities uh, uh, in the last 25 years. The key insight, I think, if you sort of uh, take away an insight from uh, this, is that open closed string duality is key, is very central to this. It's the two different pictures of D-brains in terms of them being open string. Uh, objects as well as sourcing close strings that sort of underlies this magic. But there's a corresponding limitation, which is that it's that you need some D-brain constructions in typically and in flat space string theory. Uh, and there have been no shortage of ingenious constructions which have uh, helped us generate very new example uh, very many new examples uh, but but these are in some uh, asymptotically flat superstring backgrounds uh, and, uh, and then you take a near horizon limit of the geometry it's uh, they are very natural, I think, in an expansion around this point, around the supergravity point, or a large radius limit. But, um, but I think it's also a limitation, uh, since um, that I think uh, is a, is a lamppost we are sort of uh, stuck to uh, 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 otherwise. The second approach to try to derive is maybe effect, what you might call effective string theory. This is, a, uh, this is essentially the subject of, uh, will be the subject of Sergei's lectures. So, uh, uh, so I won't say very much about it, uh, except that it's an effective field theory uh, approach, but now to the world sheet theory of strings uh, in a derivative expansion like the effective field theories are around a long uh, flux tube. And, uh, uh, and since, uh, again, this will be the subject of the lectures, I will not say very much except to say that one very important insight is that, that there's the universality in the first few terms uh, and uh, very s somewhat surprisingly uh, and uh, you and this uh, can be phenomenologically quite powerful uh, and I think uh, you hear more about uh, all this so uh, uh, so it's a it's a it's a systematic approach like the effective field theories are, uh, uh, but that in turn is a limitation which is like all effective field theories, it's uh, how to go beyond the, beyond the ex derivative expansion uh, and uh, 
to a microscopic sort of a well sheet theory, in particular to reconstruct the radial direction and so on. Uh, that's, uh, that's, I think, something that has uh, not yet uh, been achieved, but that's part of the limitations of um, uh, of, uh, uh, of effective string theory itself. So that's one. Uh, that a third approach is integrability, which. Uh, it's been, of course, extremely successful in the planar limit of maximally supersymmetric gauge theories. The spectrum of single trace operators can be obtained as a function of lambda. So, <coughs> the function of lambda, so you can actually go in this direction, uh, at least, if not in the vertical direction, but at least in the horizontal direction, you can go. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and write down explicit equations and, uh, and uh, obtain this, at least for the maximally supersymmetric theories. And um, even with correlators, there has been some progress uh, through the through a number of approaches, uh, such as the hexagon approach or the bootstrapability, combining with the bootstrap and so on. Uh, and uh, so that's been very uh, powerful uh, as a tool. Uh, so I, I, I think for me, the key insight from this uh, is uh, that, uh, which originated from the original BMN uh, uh, work, uh, which led to this integrability, is that the BMN string bit picture of yang mills operators <coughs> is probably universal. It's probably more general. I, I mean, suggests that there might be more general than... Uh, so the picture that arises here, with, uh, which is within this typed st structure of integrability, might, but nevertheless, the underlying theory may not be integrable, but but this underlying picture of the spin chain or uh, interacting with each other might be might be mm, true uh, more generally. Uh, and, uh, and then from any integrable system, the limitation uh, of this is, of course, that uh, uh, how do you build up a covariant world sheet picture from a spin chain Hamiltonian? <coughs> In some ways, it's like some light cone gate fixed uh, world sheet description that seems to be suggested by this. How do you sort of make it more covariant and use it as a way to quantize uh, the system more completely and more generally? Uh, so that's, I think, a limitation. involves a uh, world sheet description in terms of uh, the pure spinner variables. And this is a description of the sigma model on ADS5 times S5, or many of these maximally supersymmetric backgrounds. There's a world sheet description in principle for any value of the coupling, any value of lambda. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, 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 so this uh, is uh, uh, being pioneered by Nathan Berkowitz. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's, again, 
potentially powerful, uh, you can try to take, uh, and, and maybe I'll try to make, con I don't know if I'll have time, but uh, maybe the, in the last this thing, I'll try to make contact with uh, some aspects, some at least qualitative aspects of uh, this uh, uh, picture, because one of the things Nathan tried to do is some try to look for a simplification of this in in the lambda goes to zero regime, which is the opposite regime here in this corner. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things uh, uh, it's uh, not been completely uh, fleshed out, but he would. Uh, he, he was hoping to see the uh, free n equals to 4 n mills uh, uh, arise from an equivalent way of describing the lambda goes to zero world sheet theory. Uh, but uh, what I like about it is that it's very similar uh, uh, to a gauge linear sigma model description of uh, as lambda goes to zero again. Of uh, another duality which involves uh, large n Chen Simons theory and topological strings, which uh, with Kumran we had proposed again many years ago, in which uh, Kumran and Hiroshi uh, made into a more complete derivation for that particular case. Uh, so, this is. Uh, so this gauge linear sigma model description is a way in which you see how uh, holes <coughs> uh, open up in a in a closed string description or uh, as lambda goes to zero. Uh, and. Uh, uh, so there was a very nice picture in terms of two phases of the gauge linear sigma model, and the holes being that of the Coulomb phase, whereas the bulk of the world sheet is in the Higgs phase. And, and I think there's, we see certain hints of that. And I think uh, uh, this is a part of the puzzle. The, uh, the broad limitation with uh, the, the spear spinner approach seems to be that it's technically challenging to quantize. Uh, and seems to be quite closely tied to the maximally supersymmetric backgrounds. So, so that's uh, one uh, approach. Any questions? Okay. <coughs> the fifth one, which is what these lectures will be mostly about, <coughs> will be one which So there is a, I'll mention this when I get to the ADS example, but there's a so-called hybrid formalism, which is sort of, it's a green Schwartz, come never Schwartz, uh, 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 this thing which is close, <laughs> the green Schwartz one is closely related to the, so the ADS three times S3 is sort of in green Schwartz type variables, <laughs> it's closely related to the pure spinner approach. And that uh, indeed, helps us in studying uh, the tensionless limit because there's a world sheet description in that case <coughs> in terms of a Vesemino witten model. Uh, um, uh, so, so that's a low dimensional example which at least there's some partial understanding. Yeah, and that's sort of the direction in which maybe the, I think this approach makes contact <coughs> also with um, 
So, so, uh, so this <coughs> approach here uh, uh, starts with this point, uh, this corner here, which is just perturbative gauge theory. So these are two corners we understand. This one, of course, uh, is there. But this is uh, what we all study in our perturbative quantum field theory courses. So we better understand that uh, side. Uh, so we understand that side of uh, the duality well. Uh, so and in fact, that's the context in which Thoft initially uh, came up with the idea of uh, large n expansion and so on. Uh, and this is a highly stringy regime from the point of view of the uh, bulk. So, uh, so the reason people haven't been uh, focusing so much on this side is because while we understand the field theory, we have very little handle on the bulk uh, uh, description. And uh, but I think that's an opportunity. Um, and uh, and uh, so what uh, we'll try to do here is to see how we can at least go from the perturbative gauge theory following the original insight of Tuft. Uh, go from Feynman diagrams to world sheets. So the Feynman diagrams we understand. So can we go from there to world sheets <coughs> in some constructive kind of a way? And I'll try to uh, <coughs> uh, try to I think uh, exemplify in these examples, uh, how you can explicitly and to a high degree of explicitness uh, see the reorganization of uh, of the Feynman diagrams into world sheet amplitudes. There's a very general mechanism by which that happens, which has nothing to do with supersymmetry and so on, and is simply to do with the combinatorics or the way in which uh, a remarkable relation between, I think, uh, large n Feynman diagrams and the moduli space of string theories. Uh, and you sort of have a one to one mapping between world sheets and this one is a sort of a one-to-one -one mapping uh, and which you can realize in these models also not without limitations uh, it gives a way to obtain this procedure as we'll see more fully uh, gives a way to obtain world sheet correlators in a special gauge in a special gauge on the on the world sheet I'll call it the treble gauge but I'll it's a very nice very uh, uh, it's not a it's a covariant gauge but it has it has uh, 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 has some very interesting properties, uh, uh, but uh, you get integrals on, but you need to you need to unpack the integrals on moduli space. So you very naturally get some integrals on the moduli space of genus G, Riemann surfaces with n punctures. Uh, uh, so you want to unpack them into some kind of sigma model correlators. Um, uh, 
in other words, uh, reconstruct the background. There, there are hints on how to do this, but so far there's an element of guesswork and sort of informed guesswork involved in this. But it would be nice to develop that into a systematic procedure. Uh, and uh, uh, but that's where we are. Uh, so uh, as I said, I'll focus on this last approach, but I'll try to make connections uh, to some of the other approaches as we go on. But I, I want to ask an, uh, one more uh, 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 why question about why do we start with this tensionless limit. Uh, and I, I want to just emphasize that it might seem that this is free or perturbative gauge theory, but firstly, uh, a free gauge theory is not the same as a trivial gauge theory. And there is a Gauss law constraint. The operators are physical operators, are gauge invariant operators. And this, in fact, as was uh, uh, studied long ago by Sundborg, Polyakov, uh, Ofer, Shiraz, Kiriakos, various collaborators, and uh, that there's a Hagedorn spectrum uh, of even free gauge theory, and it exhibits the different phases of uh, gauge theories, etc. So, uh, free gauge theories or perturbative gauge theories are by no means trivial, uh, and uh, mm, uh, and uh, they, in fact, they capture a lot of stringy geometry. So that's. Um, uh, uh, um, one uh, answer to that question. But uh, the second is also that this point is a very natural point to expand around this tensionless limit because you see this lambda going to zero is that is that the effectively the tension or one over, if you keep the radius fixed, one over the string length is going to uh, infinity. Um, uh, the string length is going to infinity or the tension is going to zero. Um, this is an ADS version of the flat space high energy scattering that David, uh, uh, David Mende and then later David um, proposed has, is, an, is the point around which you exhibit some of the unbroken symmetries of string theory. Uh, and indeed, in the ADS case, these unbroken symmetries are very visible. They are these higher spin symmetries. You see. Uh, uh, you see uh, various uh, mm, uh, uh, higher spin gauge fields which correspond to a single reject trajectory of the string theory, uh, how they um, <coughs> become massless and when you go away from lambda equal to zero they get Higgs by some kind of a bulk Higgs mechanism. So in some ways this is a natural point to expand around if you want to uncover some of the hidden symmetries of string theory. Uh, and it's likely that this theory is a topological string theory. Uh, and there are many indications uh, in what, uh, at least in the concrete examples we study, that that's indeed the case. And this implies actually quite novel things about the correlators of that string theory, uh, which are not always maybe uh, very familiar. For instance, they have interesting localization properties on the world sheet. So, um, OK, so that's about some general comments. Is there a clock? Uh, so uh, <coughs> any questions? You, yeah. uh, you mentioned the notion of tensionless string, but it doesn't sound like it's literally I just mean that this ratio is going to zero. Uh, this uh, radius of ADS in string units. Uh, some, uh, if you wish, it is the point of smallest radius in this parameter space, which corresponds to a free theory. But in some of the examples that you gave, it goes to one. Uh, yeah, the one or zero is uh, like a, I mean, that, that's a stringy, the, I, I, if you wish, the stringy radius, the notion of a radius itself is a kind of a uh, not so well defined object. Uh, so I, I don't insist on it being zero or it's what you might call the analog of the tensionless limit, the smallest radius 
that can be supported <coughs> uh, uh, by the flux and so on. Uh, no, but even that is not the case in the example. You can make it even smaller. It's well, a, uh, uh, it's a very special transition point between two different phases. Yeah, uh, so uh, there may be, but, but okay, again, the notion of what, it's a, uh, I think it's a special point in the modelized space where there is a lot of unbroken symmetries, if you wish. That's uh, uh, what, uh, for me, the I operational think, definition is, is from the free the theory. I think it can be defined uh, as a point where the transition between, uh, we call it the geometry phase to uh, yeah. the phase There may be a good, uh, there may be a good bulk definition, but at the moment, my operational definition is the dual to free theories. Because the free theories are the but ones where there is, is a... True. There are points of transition that are not dual to free theories. Uh, so maybe, I mean, but I, I'm insisting on these points. These are, the, for me, the starting points. And for n equals to 4 Young Mills, that's the zero coupling oh, limit. You limit yourself. Uh, I, I know nothing about the n equals to 4 Young Mills. So everything that you say is for n equals I mean, our analogs thereof. Uh, the, uh, the, so the free symmetric orbifold point, that's one uh, point, uh, uh, which is like free n equals to four Young Mills. There is uh, the free matrix integral, Gaussian matrix integral, that's also the analog of the free point. So just those will be my starting points, and I'll do a perturbation expansion around them. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in, in six dimensions, there is a multitude of uh, tension. How much of this is Yeah. Uh, so uh, the six dimensional case uh, is, it doesn't have this parameter in some sense. So, um, and it's probably related to n theory and so on. So my, I'm limiting to cases where I have a tunable parameter and there is some point which corresponds to a sort of a free point which has large, unbroken, uh, higher spin symmetries and I'm expanding around that. So it's, it's the point about free point which we don't apply, I guess. The what? There is a tunable parameter also, but however... It, it doesn't free correspond free to a perturbative world sheet right. description. Yeah. So yeah, so, so <coughs> this... I, I'm going to look at things in this corner because I think there's much to be learned around that point. So I'll start with the first example of the matrix model. large n <coughs> gauge theory. Well, gauge is a bit of a, uh, uh, is a bit of a, uh, I mean, uh, overkill here, but uh, it, it is, is a zero dimensional matrix integral. A single one matrix. take a single n by n matrix, a mission matrix, and <coughs> I consider an action which is a single trace uh, of a potential by V of m. to be um, a Gaussian plus 
treat these as perturbative parameters in the sense, again, that this will be the free point and these will be uh, uh, this you can take to be polynomial or whatever. We'll view this as a generating function. So you can divide, if you want to insist on it being a gauge theory, you can divide by the volume of un. Uh, and uh, you define this generating function. This is a generating function of single trace correlators. So the single trace correlators are the objects which we would expect to be dual to. Um, uh, uh, to uh, to the uh, uh, to the single string states, it's the volume of what? U uh, n, the volume of U n. Yeah, you, if you wish, you you can your identifying configurations uh, under M goes to U M. You dagger, you, you wish that that's the gauge group. <coughs> so, this, of course, was famously studied by Brazen at Six and Paris Zuba uh, as the, uh, in fact, uh, inspired by the Toft's large n limit as a simple toy model for large n and especially its combinatorics. Uh, and one can consider an uh, endpoint function of these. Uh, so this is basically, um, I put the, uh, the, this angle bracket is basically putting this uh, into this uh, integral and uh, considering the connected pieces. So there's a large n factorization, so I'm not interested in that. But I look at the connected pieces uh, and I pick out I can organize things, as Toft told us, by genus. So I can pick out the genus G piece in a 1 over mx function. Uh, um, so, so I can, I, you see that by taking enough derivatives with respect to t bar, I can pull down uh, a, any correlator. And I can evaluate it in the Gaussian theory. That would correspond to setting all the t bars to 0. But I could just as easily keep the t bars the uh, non-zero as well, in which case I would be evaluating it in the background of some of these. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, so in particular, so I could consider this for t bar k not equal to zero, but in particular, uh, if we differentiate with respect to the t bar k and set uh, uh, them equal to 0 afterwards, uh, we get correlators in the Wigner matrix model or Gaussian matrix model. So sometimes I'll uh, look at some of the simplifications that come uh, in that limit, but uh, but as you'll see, doesn't don't really need to specialize for that case. So it's these objects that you expect will be dual to some endpoint function. So the n of these, k1 to kn, these are integers, positive integers, greater than uh, zero. Um, and uh, and you expect that this will be dual to single particle correlators in a dual string theory. Uh, and I think this is uh, a skeletal, I mean, just as the, the motivation of Brazen at Six and Parisi and Zuba, uh, I, I think, though they didn't talk about uh, the string dual, uh, the, you, uh, this, uh, wh what was very useful for them and for people afterwards was that this captures <coughs> the uh, uh, combinatorics uh, of the large n big contractions uh, uh, big 
because you you can think of this diagrammatically as some uh, <coughs> try to use some colors. So so you can have multiple weak contractions consistent with the genus. So I'm drawing some planar contraction. So these are double line graphs, so these are fat graphs, so that's why I've drawn them in a thick way. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so this would be in this particular case, I could also draw something on the other side with contraction, like this. And this would be some genus zero four point function. Uh, one contribution to the genus zero four point function uh, uh, of operators trace m to the four. You see there are four uh, legs coming out of here. This would be trace m to the five, trace m to the four, trace m cubed. Uh, this would be a connected genus zero contribution to a correlator like that, and it's just, and there will be many more, many such inequivalent contractions, and basically these are counting them because the weight that is associated with each, uh, say, in the Gaussian theory. Of course, if there, if we now have interactions, you could you could add additional interaction vertices uh, as well, and. Um, then you would be correspondingly counting. But everything ultimately reduces to counting uh, just Gaussian correlators. Uh, and uh, the Gaussian is just the propagator is just gives a factor of T2. Uh, there's no space-time dependence, so it's just a number. Uh, and, um, uh, and in that sense, I think it captures the skeletal piece of any large n gauge theory, it, it uh, in a uh, in a free Yang Mills theory, what you would do is some very souped up version of this. There would be many different matrices, and you would have uh, space time dependence and so on associated to each of them. But the combinatorics of the contraction, there'll be the similar sort of uh, <laughs> diagrams that will appear over there. So in that sense. I think understanding the string dual to this, and that's in a way the reason for this inclusion map here, that it's somehow a piece of uh, the uh, piece of <coughs> this uh, 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 any general. This should be somehow embedded inside uh, large n gauge theories in general. So. Uh, so let me first make a okay. yes. Can I ask you a question? I mean, <coughs> is, is there a possibility there, there is a chaotic behavior in this uh, matrix model? So if you change slightly the initial matrix that you start with, after all, it's an integral between the initial and final matrix, right? So what if you make a slight change in the, in the initial matrix? Will, will the uh, yeah, you're talking about this matrix integral? Yes, so it, it is just a zero dimensional integral. Okay, There's no exactly. time. I know, okay, okay, yes. but you still, you still start with some initial matrix, right? I mean, uh, the, 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 the integral has two uh, ends, right? Well, uh, you're integrating from minus infinity to infinity like uh, uh, you normally would in the Original well, Brazil six and Paris. Th that's the only possibility. I mean, there is no way to take. Some I mean, you could truncate, uh, but those. I mean, people do study some of those, but I'm looking at the simplest Wigner-like distribution. Where, I in practice, of course, in the large n limit, there is a, the eigenvalues are uh, have a mm, the have a finite support uh, if you scale them by n, but. But yeah, uh, but effectively you are integrating over the whole range. Uh. Yes, in, in what sense the dual string moves in one dimension 
Okay, let me say what the dual string is and then maybe. <coughs> so the claim, which I was just going to make, which is in a recent paper you know, with uh, Edward Mazink. So I should have said over here. So uh, much of this will be work with, the, uh, with uh, Edward <coughs> Mazink, who is a uh, uh, very bright postdoc at Chicago. Uh, this work is, I'll describe my work with uh, Eberhardt, Gabardiel, and also some of the students and postdocs, Pranavesh Maiti, Andrea Day, Bob Knighton, uh, <coughs> And uh, this is uh, with Matthias Gabardiel. <coughs> so the claim uh, which I want to make and which uh, is that uh, the one Hermitian matrix model this theory uh, is dual to uh, a model a topologically twisted a model on a Kazama Suzuki coset uh, uh, SL2R module 1 coset where the level uh, of the SL2R is at k equals to 1 supersymmetric. There's a supersymmetric Kazama Suzuki model uh, and uh, this has central charge 9 and so you can twist it in the usual way that you would. I'll describe this later but I uh, just want to s just make the statement. Uh, so it's dual to this with uh, momentum mode turned on uh, with a certain background momentum, which I'll describe uh, later. Uh, uh, and th this is one uh, version, but then there is a sort of a mirror version. which is a B model topological string theory and these two are uh, mirrors of each other. A B model on a landau Ginsberg a B model with a landau Ginsberg superpotential uh, which is something closely related to something uh, Ami and uh, uh, Yaranoz and Ron Plesser and Devashish Koshal and Sunil Mukhi and others had studied many years ago. Um, Landau Ginsberg superpotential, uh, they had studied something, a singular potential, one over Z, but here there'll be something which is all has a linear term in Z as well, re uh, reflecting this. Uh, background, it's the uh, dual to this momentum mode here. So, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get what this is precisely. It's an E model topological mm -hmm. string theory. Right, it's very possible. Take a sigma model, SL2R mod U1, Kazama Suzuki, it yeah. has central charge 9. Yes. Uh, you can uh, twist it as a sort of deform the stress tensor by the, in the usual, there's an A model twist where you twist it in the same way. Uh, and uh, that theory has uh, physical cohomology. Uh, you can consider BRST operator if that theory, which is essentially uh, in the usual way you construct from the, 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 the hosts and the matter system. And that string theory you have a, has a well-defined cohomology. There's a BRST operator. It has simple cohomology. Uh, in the case of Calabi all three folds, which also has equal to 9. You might be familiar with the statement that the physical cohomology are these chiral primaries of the uh, string theory. Uh, 
uh, but um, uh, here it's not a calabial, but it has the same central charge. <laughs> Sorry? It's a certain coniform. It's a cigar geometry, yeah. No, it's, it's, a geometry. It's, uh, it's a, it's a, if you want to think of it as a geometry, it's a cigar like geometry, but uh, uh, at very small central, small central charge, so it's a very extreme geometry. Uh, and, um, um, so why a C <coughs> Sorry? Why is C to 9? A C equals to 9? Well, that's a general statement about the A model string theories that um, Calabria of three folds are any CFT is n equal to 2 well sheet CFT with C equal to 9 have the special property that it has there is a watch there this no, are on the that side, you know the super string yeah 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 uh, in the the dual side there is no this thing but it's that's like that was true even with the chan simons duality the, the chan simons gauge theory and the dual I, uh, the, a topological string theory is effectively like a bosonic theory in some sense uh, the physical yeah, spectrum is just yeah. that was Uh, the C equal to 1 at the moment I haven't brought in, but uh, the, uh, yeah. Uh, C equals to 9 is, uh, um, I mean, it's the critical dimension for the A model. Let me put it that way. The, uh, the conifold or any of these, uh, for a topological string theory, the natural critical dimension is C equal to 9. Or C, I mean, basically, it's like a Calabria or threefold, it's 6 plus 3. Uh, uh, Six was on it. Then take a, a, a uh, you know, special choice and go to the double scaling. Yes. See somehow changes from one to one. Uh, well, no. Uh, the uh, so firstly, I should say they're all like critical in the sense that C is equal to zero ultimately. That's uh, so in that sense, it's probably more a matter of rearranging what you mean by. Uh, the central charge between matter and ghost degrees of, of freedom uh, when you uh, and here by the way the one Hermitian matrix model the one that I'm considering if you take the double scaling limit you get the whole 2 comma p minimal models so they have this whole range of uh, so normally you double, you pick one less of them right it's still less than one it's still less than one but that's I think because you, when you zoom into a piece of it, you see only certain excitations which correspond to the uh, uh, to the uh, physical to the uh, physical states of the C less than one model. I don't even understand what it means to discuss C of this theory. Yeah, quite well defined. Uh, because it's uh, the C is zero. Yeah, there is one C that is zero. I understand what it is, and the, the other it depends on how you write it. Because here you also have some common, but there is something which is unambiguous, which would I think which is in the spirit of what David was asking. You can ask how many states there are, how many yeah. physical operators. Right. That's completely meaning. Right. Right. The C plus one barrier is associated with having many states. So I can rephrase David's question: How many states? Yeah. Are so states? this is what I was uh, sort of alluding to at the end: that when you zoom in, you you see a small subset of the states which correspond to the physical but states of the C less than one theory. But this theory has essentially single particle states corresponding to each of these. But that's so also true in the metrics model in the state. It, but you, you have the only the oper Okay, there, there are the gravitational descendants and then there are uh, the uh, uh, there are the gravitational descendants and then there are the primaries uh, of the matter. And uh, So, um, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, so here you have uh, these will uh, so th these will turn out to be the states of uh, the uh, <coughs> theory with uh, which correspond to the gravitational descendants of uh, uh, so they so there are uh, so these but I okay. I should say that th there's probably a larger class of uh, observables also in the matrix model that you can consider more than these operators, which correspond to certain discrete states uh, here. Uh, but 
at the moment, the ones I'll be focusing on, these, uh, these operators, they correspond to uh, modes here with momentum k. Uh, uh, so in this cigar geometry, you have modes. The physical states will be modes with momentum, uh, uh, which are integers. And these will be the ones which correspond to, say, negative momentum. And that's a subset of the physical states. And those will, um, uh, yeah. Uh, when you go to the double scaling limit, and we, we can actually do that uh, uh, in uh, in a in a, a very specific way, you will have uh, you you get copies corresponding to the different minimal model. So, for instance, the single cut solution, there will be two sets of states which are, if you wish localized at each of these and if you zoom into one of them you get the minimal model the 2 comma 1 minimal models that uh, 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 correspond to the original Hermitian matrix model so there's a kind of a doubling which is there because you see the whole cut but so I, don't I don't see uh, the point I, uh, the way I understood your response to the other states yeah. you zoom on something yeah. therefore you see fewer states that's yeah. what I heard you say. But all these states are there in the matrix model, all and also in the minimal string. The minimal string is the operators that come out of primary matter, got dressed by the user. But it also has all the other states. And that is uh, no, what do you mean other states? Oh, Which other states? Any k, any k corresponds to an operator in the new real time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, so there's no truncation. Right. Uh, so here also there are many more states. Uh, so those gravitational descendants are there, which will, uh, uh, which will. Uh, what I mean to say is that this theory actually has more states because there are, in some sense, uh, and this is more clear from this picture, that there'll be two sets of states which are associated to both the endpoints. Well, that's a factor of two, but the zoom. The way I heard you respond to David is if you zoom on something, you throw away most of the states, you are left with a small number. Yeah, but that's not the case in the minimal string. In the minimal string, if you look at the BLSD cosmology, even in pure gravity, as in pure gravity, this is C equal zero. Yeah, there's you one primary and the all its descendants. So, so you see those. So you see those. Uh, so when you I said pure, I meant in terms of the primaries. The gravitational descendants are always there because the 2D gravity coupling is always there. It's the matter piece which is getting kind of truncated. When you go to the 2 comma 1, there are, there's one primary. When you're 2 comma p, there'll be some uh, number, of number of primaries. So it's that which is getting truncated. Uh, so And uh, that depends a little bit on the nature of the, uh, the singularity here at the uh, the, sing uh, the singularity here, but uh, uh, but the states. This one has, in a sense, everything, uh, and the others are subsets. Uh, Can you repeat again the k, the k that you have? Uh, Which k? The this k? S, no, the S L two R yes. eleven k. What is the k on the left hand side? What it corresponds to? It, 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 no, it's fixed. It's at level one. Ah, it's level one. It's level one. Uh, uh, that's what corresponds to C equal to nine. Okay, so it's specialized to level one. Level one. This is very important because uh, this is what we uh, see here as well. In this case, also, it's the level one theory. Uh, uh, so it's the same and very similar properties that hold here, hold here too. Prajesh, you said that you also turn on the momentum mode. Sorry? In this case, yes. So in the mode is marginal, like exactly marginal? Okay. Yes, it's actually the one of the J plus. It has this uh, self dual radius, and this is sort of one of the SU2 operators. So it's a e to the i root 2 x type of uh, uh, operator. In the A model, what is the T2 dependence? The T2 dependence is here. This is a momentum two. That's what uh, Zohar was asking. So the m there's a momentum two mode, which is a marginal operator, uh, which you can turn on. Uh. So maybe to make contact with the other, the double scale matrix model, and this 
sorry, do you turn on relevant operator to float as a minimum model? Uh, 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 do you turn on relevant operators if you want to uh, go to the minimum models? Yes. Uh, are you asking? Uh, okay, the, 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 uh, the cleanest way we see the uh, the two comma one models uh, is is not through a double scaling limit, uh, though I think that can be done, but. Uh, what we call a BMN limit. If you take these operators to be very large, these k's to be very large, then you kind of effectively zoom in on this end. Because you see, when, when <coughs> k's are very large, the majority of the correlator gets its contribution from the endpoints of the cup, because that's where this is dominant. So, so that's so we ha that's an alternative to the double scaling limit, but which I think does the same thing. And you can show that the correlators in that limit go to those of the, at least the two comma one minimal models. Uh, and then you would probably have to turn on uh, relevant operators to go from the two comma one to the two comma p. Uh, Okay, so let me. Um, so in the remain. Uh, so this is the claim, <coughs> which I'll. What I'll do now. Uh, well, I'll just make certain. So uh, what we'll do first is to verify this claim. And so, meaning that to show that this is actually the same, that these correlators are the same, and we'll do that by uh, showing the equality of this matrix integral, or actually a generalization of this matrix integral, to another matrix integral. And so I'll just write down maybe the two matrix integrals, uh, and um, uh, so uh, effectively, what we'll show is that this matrix integral is the same as another so-called um, impimbo Mukhi matrix model that describes the C equal to one string theory amplitudes at self-dual radius. And those amplitudes, uh, the C equal to one string theory at self-dual radius is has these dual descriptions. And in fact, that's how they were first uh, studied, uh, though, uh, again, the sequel to one string theory with a certain momentum mode turned on. And this uh, uh, will be uh, this what matrix what integral. What do, by, uh, what do you mean by a momentum mode turned on? It means there will be a background. I turn on, I mean, I have, have a non-zero uh, background for that momentum, uh, for that particular mode. In the action. Uh, in the S2 model, by one description, what is precisely the thing that you do? So uh, you you will you'll have uh, modes of momentum plus one plus two, it's, uh, and so on, and you turn on the plus two mode. There's a uh, that's the. What do, what do you mean by turning on? What I mean, you uh, uh, it's a marginal operator, so you turn marginal operator, operator so you add you add it to the Lagrange. So, so I, I want to. So this will be very concrete. Uh, what I want to actually show is that the equality comes from the equality of two matrix integrals, which, which is a very concrete. Integral that you can do. So I claim that this matrix integral, or it's a two matrix integral over two Hermitian matrices K and M. 
with some potential V of K, there's some linear coupling between K and M. This X, this Y, and X's will be some sources. Uh, I, I claim this is the same as seemingly very similar looking. At first sight, it might seem almost like a tautology, but uh, uh, as, uh, as you'll see, it's, uh, it's a non-trivial equivalence. So I claim... Uh, yeah, so let me... Uh, so X is... Um, n by n matrix whose sorry x is a q by q matrix whose eigenvalues are x a uh, who, which is just a diagonal matrix eigenvalues x a and y similarly is an n by n matrix so that's why it appears here Which are these y's? There's a trace. This is a n by n trace. This is a q by q trace. Uh, and these are determinants. This is a n by n determinant. This is a q by q determinant. Uh, so, so I claim there's an identity of matrix integrals of this kind. Uh, so there's e to the g, some potential v of k, k times m minus y, and then these determinant operators. Uh, and uh, a, a similar expression here, but uh, with in terms of q by q matrix integrals, but this role of the y and the x's are interchanged. So now I have this determinant here with the y's, and here the determinant was with the x's. Uh, this equality I'll show maybe in the next lecture, mm, but uh, it's very straightforward to, uh, to do. It's very similar to a set of, uh, it's, uh, it's using this sort of Hubbard Stratinovich type of or color flavor duality, which has appeared in different guises and uh, minimal model strings, very similar things for one matrix integrals was done by uh, Nati, Juan, Greg Moore, David Shee. In the SYK case, uh, similar things were done by Goel and Berlinde. In the quantum chaos in Altland and Sonner. So this is sort of something that has made an appearance in different contexts. Uh, mm, and uh, But I want to, so there's a mathematical equality of this, which uh, I'll postpone. But I want to sort of give a picture for this, which uh, Any Q, any N. Uh, so, so I consider. Uh, let's see, this one I wanted. Uh, just this one, just what yeah. What is X sub A? X sub A. So, X is a Q by Q matrix, and the diagonal entries A goes from one to Q. Well, Z N is Q. Sorry? Oh, these are some normalization factors. Uh, 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 when you put x and y equal to 0, it's just some the value of the path integ uh, the integral there. It won't be important. Uh, uh, so that's some um, normalization. Uh, so yeah, so this x, xa, a goes from 1 to q, i goes from 1 to n. So it's a diagonal matrix y1 to yn. This is x a, x1 to xq. But so I want to say that this is a description of the open string degrees of freedom between n 
compact brains. And here, what we call non-compact brains. Um, the, uh, the terminology compact, non-compact, to just leave uh, aside for the moment. And here, these string degrees of freedom. Let me use another color. Uh, these correspond to the uh, uh, to these A's and the B's, and we'll also the Hubbard Stratonovich trick will involve introducing some fermions, which are in the bifundamental uh, between them, and so you should view this equality of integrals as one in which I one description and one open string description in terms of a certain n by n matrix degrees of freedom in which the other brains are just some sources of these determinant operators. Uh, uh, so these other brains appear in this description as just some determinant operators, whereas there's an equivalent description in terms of the degrees of freedom of these brains in which the other brains appear as determinant operators. Uh, and we'll see how to go from one to the other. Uh, uh, so they're not quite mirror, they are quite... Uh, okay, so, so this is something that... Uh, uh, and both describe... So both will be dual to the closed string, uh, closed string uh, uh, dual. Uh, we'll see how as we'll specialize and show uh, uh, to this finally, but uh, these two actually there's a direct relation which is sort of graph dual. Y uh, the Feynman graphs of this theory are uh, dual to the Feynman graphs, gra dual in the graph sense, that the vertices here go over to faces here, faces here go over to vertices here, uh, and uh, the edges go to the dual edges. Uh, uh, so. So this process of integrating in, integrating out, exchanges graphs with dual graphs. Um, original Feynman graphs uh, will get exchanged for another set of Feynman graphs. Uh, and uh, so this, uh, and the reason I'm emphasizing some of these points is also because I think these are more, this is more general and uh, applies, and this is what we call an open closed open triality that this is a sort of a more general phenomenon that there are two natural open string descriptions. Uh, uh, anyway, since I have very little time, I'll just say the philosophy here. Uh, two natural open string descriptions for a closed string dual. I mean, we talked about open closed duality. There's the original ND3 brains, but there's a dual set of giant graviton brains, if you wish which have an open string description as well, which uh, is a more natural open string description if you are expanding around the zero coupling limit. Uh, uh, so if you wish the original D3 brains, these ones are the natural description around large radius, and these ones are the natural description around small radius. So uh, uh, I'll try to... Small radius, radius. Here, of course, there isn't any radius, but that in this sort of an inclusion, that's uh, roughly the, uh, uh, that's the picture I would like to advocate. That uh, we're running out of time, but, but just using these this, this integral identities, one you say one can take a matrix model, which has a, some kind of dual matrix model. Yeah. In that matrix model, yeah, the, they'll be mapped to, and uh, the, uh, they are mapping of uh, these T's and T bars in the dual matrix model. And in fact, it's that dual matrix model that allows the identification to these uh, and you get a, a, uh, closed string. You get a, a soluble equations that can be either 
So uh, th those the dual matrix model uh, here, without any double scaling, will turn out to describe the uh, describe C equal to one amplitudes at self dual radius, and the C uh, with some background turned on, and that's what and then the C equal to one string theory at self dual radius has these dual descriptions. So this indirect chain is a way to verify to all genus that these correlators must agree with these correlators. What I want to do is go <coughs> further to sort of tautologize it or to make it more <coughs> manifest, which I will try to argue a little bit. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is still uh, based on works to appear, uh, but I'll try to say a little bit about why uh, uh, this matrix model on this SL2R mod U1 is uh, the natural thing that's dual to these matrix correlators. And here it will be, uh, I'll use some of the results that we saw for the SL2R mod U1, uh, SL2R level one theory in ADS3 times S3, that there's a sort of a localization uh, and uh, so we'll try to derive this, both these. Okay. By the way, um, for those of you who may be familiar with matrix models, uh, this superpotential is what is called the spectral curve associated to the Gaussian matrix model. Uh, if I uh, uh, if I uh, if, if I think of W and uh, so I if I uh, 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 it, so if you see, if it, this is just a quadratic. It's the future, so a few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to stop. I'm, just, uh, I'm essentially done just making this remark that you see this <coughs> superpotential. If you just multiply it out, it's a quadratic in Z and W. And that's the spectral curve associated to the Gaussian matrix model, which is the Wigner distribution. So this is, uh, and this is what appears in, the, so this derivation uses this machinery of topological recursion of Einard and company. So we'll, uh, I'll hopefully try to at least tell you some glimpses of that next time. Okay, thank you.